is Roman and I like maps and in particular web maps and today I will tell you about highlighting countries and other regions such as states and provinces on maps that are based on OpenStreetMap in a talk with a somewhat clunky title. Um, as a note before I get started, uh, I put some references and links in my slides um, and I will also make the slides available after the talk in case you want to check those out. So let's get started. As Stephen already mentioned, I work for the Neue Zürcher Zeitung, more easily known as NZZ. It's a German language daily newspaper uh, that is published online and in print. Um, I think about 100,000 people read the printed version as an order of magnitude and probably about another 100,000 the online version, which may seem not that much, but which actually makes it one of the big newspapers in Switzerland. Uh, as we mentioned, it's based in Zurich. Um, I will also tell you a bit more about my team. So I work in the editorial tech team. We are four people. We collaborate closely with the visuals team, which is another about 15 people. And together we do visual and data-driven storytelling. So that's things like videos, data, journalism, infographics, illustrations, etc. cetera. Uh, basically everything that goes beyond just text. So things like data, charts, maps. Um, and these things can be tailor-made for one specific article or for one specific story. Um, but this can be a bit tiring if you keep like making bar charts again and again, like that's not very inspiring work for our colleagues from the visuals team. Um, so we also try to provide some reusable tools where we kind of use the same design language that our visuals colleagues also use in their, in their custom made charts. Uh, we try to make it kind of automated so that you just enter the data and you get your chart. Um, and we have kind of a, a platform that we call QTools, which does this, which is also open source. Uh, and I've provided you here two examples. One is of a bar chart of the market capital capitalization of some big American tech companies. Uh, and the other one is of voting results in Switzerland because we tend to vote a lot in Switzerland. So that's something that's uh, like a recurring topic. And with this, we are already getting closer to maps. So we are getting to the map I want to talk to you about. Um, and specifically, I picked this example uh, that came up at the beginning of the Corona crisis. And so what you see here is a locator map. And locator maps are something very simple, but actually very important in my opinion. Like it's not something like fancy animated uh, or complicated to understand. It's just like a very simple static map that provides context for a story and familiarizes the reader with the location of an area that maybe they don't know about very well. So in this case, what you can see is uh, this map was for a story on the 23rd of January about lockdown measures in the city of Wuhan and in the province of Hubei. And so we wanted to provide our readers kind of a context to, for them to understand where Wuhan and Hubei are located. And what you can see here is that we kind of assumed that people already know where China is located in the world. So we are kind of not showing an entire globe minimap, but we're just showing China and then the location inside China, uh, along with some other cities for reference. Um, so the re what is the reason that I explain this to you like this? The reason is that I want to tell more about how such maps are made in QTools and specifically about one aspect of it. Um, so the problem is that the, it should be possible for our colleagues in the newsroom to make maps like this without requiring like weeks and weeks of training to become GIS experts. What we would like is to have a tool where they can create maps like these with a few simple clicks. Um, and in general, this tool has already existed for 
two or three years, I think, and most of the work was done by my colleague uh, Manuel, and he did really great, great work with uh, OpenStreetMap data and the uh, OpenMap Tiles project, which allows you to create maps with custom styles like you see here, uh, and which have all kinds of nice features like dynamically showing or not showing labels or showing labels on uh, highlighted countries in a different style and all these kind of things. Um, but so one thing that you cannot immediately do with open map tiles that I would like to talk about today uh, is this topic of highlighting uh, regions. Because, so what you typically have in these vector tile sets like open map tiles is that you get the, the geometries for drawing the boundaries between the countries but you don't actually get like the polygons that allow you to know the area that belongs to the same province or to the same country or to the same state. So the problem that I'm trying to solve here is how do I get this data so that I can actually highlight in this case the province of Hubei, but I would like to be able to actually let the user select any place in the world uh, that they would like to highlight. So how am I going to tackle this problem? I will first kind of try to give you an overview of the, the requirements on the more technical side, then show a bit what other people have already done in this domain, uh, then talk a bit about more about the choices and the technologies that were used in our implementation. Uh, there will also be fingers crossed a little demo and then at the end we'll have uh, an overview of some links and time for questions. Um, so in terms of technical requirements, um, what I said before is that it should be any region in the world that we want to highlight. So we somehow have to decide which regions are kind of relevant enough for us. So there has to be some kind of list. And then once we have this list for each of them, we need to get a polygon or a multi-polygon. Um, then one kind of important little detail is also that uh, typically a country also extends out into the ocean for like 12 nautical miles. And while that's technically true that the country is also there, if we highlight it on the map, typically we would only like to show the land part of the country and not the ocean part. So that's something we'll have to deal with. Um, then one very important aspect is that it has to be compatible with the base map, which means that if our base map uses boundaries from OpenStreetMap, of course, it makes sense to also have the same OpenStreetMap data that we use for our highlight polygons. And finally, we also need a stable identifier for every region so that if today I make a map where I decide to highlight Switzerland and I want to render this map again in one year from now, I still have a way to somehow refer to Switzerland without trying to refer only to its name or its coordinates or something. Um, so of course, as you may know, because you are all GIS experts, uh, there's quite a lot of existing solutions for this. There's in particular one nice project that I like on GitHub that is called GeoMaps, um, where somebody extracted all the countries from OpenStreetMap and clipped them to, to the land boundaries. Um, so, but it's only countries and it doesn't have any smaller regions. So it wouldn't have been possible, for example, to uh, highlight the Hubei a province and I think it's also not been updated lately. Then another great project is Natural Earth which is a comprehensive data set with countries and states and provinces uh, but here the problem is that this is kind of made for uh, a different scale or for certain scales of data visualizations and it's very generalized data and it's not matching very well with OpenStreetMap. So if you use this data on top of an OpenStreetMap map, you might get some misalignments. And for completeness, I will also mention here that Mapbox also has a product that is called Mapbox Boundaries, and there's another project called GADM, uh, but both of these are not open data. So for example, in Mapbox, you're kind of locked into always using their API if you want to use this data. 
So now that we decided that we want to get this data from OpenStreetMap, how do we actually go about doing this? So let's first start with one single region and I again chose here the province of Hubei. Uh, so if you just need that, you can just go to openstreetmap.org, you zoom into the area that you care about, you click this nice query features uh, button and then you will get like a list of features that are enclosing your the place where you clicked and you can click this relation, for example, in this case, the province of Hubei. Um, so now the problem is that this kind of works for one region, but it's not really a process that we can easily explain to all of our colleagues. So it's not really suitable for non-GIS experts. So basically what we want to do is like the same, but for all the regions of the world instead of just one. So how can we do that? So the first question that I have already, already kind of hinted that in the requirements is that if we say all the regions, we have to kind of decide which ones. Uh, and so in my case, I decided to go with this ISO standard list of countries and subdivisions because it kind of strikes a good compromise between getting most of the relevant countries and states and provinces, etc without necessarily like blowing up the data set with like tens and tens of thousands of municipalities in different countries that maybe in the end we don't care about. Um, and so this kind of gives the list of all the regions we want. And the way I found to extract them from OpenStreetMap is the overpass API, which is a little bit difficult to get started with because it uses this custom query language, but it's actually quite well documented and there's also this overpass turbo interface where you can kind of try out queries and you can kind of learn about it uh, in an easy way. And then once you've done that, so what I ended up doing is using this query overpass JavaScript library that uses another OSM to GeoJSON library internally because you also need to, at the end, convert this OpenStreetMap format to something like GeoJSON. Um, so how does this work with overpass? I will again start quite simply uh, with just one country. And in this case, I chose Switzerland as an example. Uh, so it's really like, as I said, it's not super intuitive to get started with, but it's actually really powerful. And with like very few lines of code, you can actually uh, get all this data. So what I'm doing here uh, is I'm saying at the beginning I want to output JSON, then I want to get the administrative boundary of the relation in OpenStreetMap that has this country code CH, and I also want to get all these uh, administrative boundaries, uh, all the relations where the subdivision code starts with CH because the codes are made such that they always uh, start with the two letters of the country and then have another kind of additional code for the subdivision. So in the case of Switzerland, that's like the 26 cantons. Uh, and then there's some other magic code at the bottom, which basically says, uh, now that I have the country and the 26 cantons, uh, not only do I want to get like the metadata of these relations from OpenStreetMap, but they also want to have like all the points and all the uh, ways and all the things that they contain so that I can actually extract the geometry from all of this and convert it to GeoJSON. Um, so now that we solved this for one country, the obvious question is like, how do we do this for all the countries? Uh, and one way to do it could be that we find somewhere on another place a list of all these like ISO codes for the countries and then just run this in a loop. Um, but actually that's not even necessary because we can just ask uh, the overpass API again. Uh, and it also allows us to query uh, all the relations that are on the admin level two, which is the country level. Uh, and give us like the ID and the this two letter country code for them. Um, so what else does this give us? 
So now we can get the, I mentioned the geometries for all the countries and their subdivisions, but actually since this is OpenStreetMap and it has really a lot of data that is uh, provided by people all over the world, uh, we can also get all this other metadata that OpenStreetMap contains. Um, so one nice thing that we can also get is that we can get this Wikidata ID uh, which gives a stable identifier for the regions. Um, and another thing that can be important depending on the use case is that of course OpenStreetMap also stores names for all these regions in different languages. So then depending on our visualization needs, we can also extract this data together with the geometries. Um, so then we come to this land clipping problem. So what I'm showing here is the uh, boundary of Iceland, which you can see is kind of out in the ocean. And what we would like to do is that like now we know kind of roughly which part of the world belongs to Iceland. We would like to clip this to include only the, the land part. And for this, we need the land areas from OpenStreetMap because of course we would like it to match with the map that is also shown below. Uh, and luckily somebody already did this in this OSM data project. So basically the way to get this data is to just download it from there. Uh, and then I was using uh, MapShaper, which is a JavaScript based uh, geometry GIS operation tool. Uh, which is quite powerful as well at handling big files and doing this kind of clipping operations. Um, so this gives us kind of two giant GeoJSON files that are between one and two gigabytes and which are kind of difficult to, to handle. Uh, and so for actually showing this data, a uh, nice way to do that is to cut it into vector tiles. And one tool that I really like for this uh, is Tipicanu, which is made by Mapbox, um, which is again kind of it's one of these tools that has like a long readme on GitHub with many options, uh, but they're also really well described. And once you kind of go your way through it and you figure out how to do all these things, you end up with something that even fits on one slide and that basically takes these two giant GeoJSON files uh, and cuts them into vector tiles from zoom level 0 to 10 uh, and creates this MB tiles file with these two layers for countries and subdivisions which also allows it, which also makes it possible to style them differently so that you can for example show countries and smaller areas in different colors um, and so what's also interesting here is as I mentioned the GeoJSON files are kind of one to two gigabytes uh, whereas the output, because it's simplified for the, the vector tiles, is only about 200 megabytes, I believe. So a quick summary of what we've seen so far. Uh, with all of these things I showed you, we get a data set of countries and common used subdivisions. It's available as GeoJSON and vector tiles, so I also provide the link. Uh, to the GitHub repo at the end where you can download all these things. Uh, and what I really like is that it's built with lots of open source and lots of open data and kind of piecing together many projects from many other people. So with that, it's time for the demo. And what I would like to show you first, because I kind of teased at it in the beginning, is how to make this map of Wuhan in the Prince of Hubei. Uh, so for this, I'll just switch to the next tab. Uh, I am on editor.q.tools, which is kind of a public demo instance for the, this Qtools toolbox that I told you about before. And so here I will say I want to make a new map and I have to give it a title. And then I can add a label for the city of Wuhan. And then call it Wuhan, not Wuhan city. And now it's kind of zoomed in very much and we are seeing the, the city from up close, but I would like to provide a bit more context. 
So I'll kind of define a bounding box that includes a bit more of China. So now I'm already pretty close to the map that I showed before on the slides. I think the one I had on the slides also used this nature map style. And now what I've been talking about all along is the highlight of a region. So I'm sorry the UI is not perfectly translated yet, but highlight in German is hervorhebung. And if I click here, I can actually select obey because our tool kind of automatically checks what points we uh, put here above and then provides relevant regions for highlighting directly. Um, so now the only thing, because I've said we already know where China in the world lies, instead of this globe here, I might actually show China and I think the position was top left. Uh, so that's it. Then I click save one more time and I can go back. And now I have my mobile version of my locator map. And even if you read the newspaper article from your desktop, from your laptop, you also get the version that is set for that. Uh, so I see I'm running out of time. I'll just show very, very quickly one more thing. Um, this is the GitHub repo that I already mentioned before and here I also made kind of a nice preview thing where you can also see all the countries right now just with their Wikidata IDs. And like one thing that I like to show is that even if you zoom into Liechtenstein, you still have it like with a nice level of detail and matching the borders around it. And you can also get the subdivisions. And so even something like the small canton of Appenzell in Switzerland, you can also highlight it with a fair amount of detail. And with this, I'll go back to the presentation. And I thank you very much for your attention. And as promised, I have the link to the slides here from which you can find all the other stuff. Uh, there's the code and the data sets for download on GitHub. Uh, the demo that I showed before is also available here on editor.q.tools. And you can also follow me or my team on Twitter if you're interested. Thank you. Roman, that's amazing. That was really impressive and almost bang on time. Congratulations for that. So I've got a couple of questions and as I'm asking them, maybe some more will come in. Um, Stefan Keller asked, he said, Roman recent to re recently told me about a geodata repository he'd like to establish, which contains such regions worldwide um, and could be maintained by many. What's the status of this idea? Um, so I don't know if, because I know Stefan personally, I don't know if there was a bit of a misunderstanding because I think that's what he proposes goes quite a bit further because I mean what I provide here is kind of this repository of worldwide areas. But of course to take it to a level where it could be also maintained by many people or to be updated on a daily basis or this kind of thing would be quite a bit more work. But what I hope is that the code and the data that I provided here can maybe also inspire or help other people if they want to do something like this. Okay, and somebody else has pointed out that um, if you want to use overpass from within QGIS, there is the quick OSM plugin which will help you to do that. Um, and I've got another question for you here, which is, does QTools offer making of chloroplast maps as shown in one of your slides? And I'm um, ah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so the one I showed in the slide is about a voting result of Switzerland. So that's kind of a very specific use case. Uh, we are also looking into the problem of chloroplast maps more generally, uh, but you have kind of a whole whole lot of problems because if you want to say, for example, the voting results of the US in the 2016 election, uh, 
based on like small area units, then you would need like the 2016 data for this. And then if you want to do it for 2020, you need the 2020 data. So I think in terms of like maintaining this data and having a global data set that is not only covering all the countries, but also the past administrative regions might be quite difficult. So I think the way we are looking into it is that we kind of have to restrict it to maybe a few countries or a few specific use cases. Okay, thank you. Um, and we are a couple of minutes, we've got a couple of minutes to spare. So I'm just going to remind people, um, first of all, let's thank Roman by asking you all to unmute yourselves and give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. And I am about to mute you all again so that so that I've now got the chance to just ask uh, Roman one more question, which is um, if I if people want to actually use um, use these tools, do they have to install them themselves, or can they actually? Is there an online place where they can actually start building their own um, maps and and saving them there? Uh, so I guess you are referring to these Q tools, which I demoed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the answer is a bit yes and no. We have this demo instance that kind of shows off the capabilities and that is openly accessible to try it out. Um, but we don't really have like a hosted instance or a product that you can buy where you can use this simply because right. that's not really our focus because we are kind of just using this mostly as an internal product. Uh, and we open sourced it so that it can be useful for other people, but we don't really have currently plans to make a product or something out of it. Okay. Okay, so it's download it from GitHub and get it working and ask for a bit of help if you need it. Yes. Okay.